father born in this country? Carl? No, he came over in uh, in. Uh, Yes, he was in the King's Guard, and he took a year's leave of absence to come over here to visit, and then he was going to go back, but uh, he never got back, so that in 1914 he sent to my mother. Yes. And they got married uh, in uh, Phoenix on August the 1st, 1914, and uh, when they were getting married, uh, they had the news that World War I had broken up. Yes. And then in 1918, the Granby Company shut I laid off quite a few of the men, and uh, a bunch of them went to Rock Creek and homesteaded at Rock Creek. Yes. And they didn't like that, so my father came over here, and uh, he and Mr. Jacobson started the ranch. Yes. And uh, I guess Mr. Jacobson stayed for uh, two years, I don't know, more, hundred years. And uh, then he uh, went to work with a carpenter in town. Work of an army. But uh, they bought two houses in Phoenix and then saw them in uh, partitions, load them into a boxcar and shipped them to Princeton and unloaded them over here at Princeton. And then they hauled them up and uh, raised the house. Yes. And uh, that was how they got the house here. How about towards the ranch? Uh, halfway between here and Elmby along the river. Oh, yes. So, is uh, that near where Mansfield is? Yes, yeah, just above. Uh, you have an idea yeah, where he is. About six hundred yards up the river from Mansfield. Oh, yes. And then, what did your father do? Did he, uh, he ranched here? Yes. Uh, the first uh, years, uh, they he delivered milk up to Elmby, but Elmby uh, shut down in nineteen twenty-two or something. So then he started uh, delivering milk in Princeton. But while in uh, Elmby. The Gladishes, uh, Mrs. Pete Kelly, used to hitch a ride with him when he was, was traveling with a slave back down because they lived uh, between Elmby and our place at what we call Timber Hill. Yes. Uh, because her parents were uh, uh, logging at the time. But that would be about uh, 1920, I guess. Yes. And uh, then we started delivering milk in Princeton, and uh, we delivered milk in Princeton until November the 1st, 1947. And then they sold the cows and uh, went into other businesses. But uh, there was uh, quite a few changes. Let's see, at one time we had so many coal mines here. Yes. And then they all shut down. The, the Nine Mile, Python Valley, the Romney Vale, uh, the Tulumine Quarries, and uh, then later on the Lynn Mine, which uh, I forget what they called it afterwards. Oh, uh, the Blue Flame, I think, was more than that than the Nine Mile, the Nine Mile uh, Quarry, they called the Blue Flame. But uh, it might be in the Lynn Valley coal mine, uh, right where the uh, Linwood is now. Oh, yes. They had the coal mine there. And then uh, Elmer Burr had uh, two or three coal mines after the rest of the coal mines shut down. Oh, did he? Yes, he, he was operating uh, a coal mine in past where the, the Mullins live now. Uh, the Mullins are in past the Sand Hill. And, and he had a coal mine there, and also a coal mine uh, close to the Whipsaw. Yes. Uh, Whipsaw Creek there. So, well, the coal mines all seemed to disappear. Yes. What? Why was that? Was it because of the Alberta coal? Well, no. Uh, the whole thing was that uh, sawdust came in, and uh, and uh, I think the sawdust and coal uh, and the oil stoves came in and displaced the, the coal because uh, wages for coal mining underground uh, rose where people wouldn't pay the extra price for coal. Yes. But see, the coal in the Princeton area was domestic coal. The coal up at uh, Coma, Rightburn, was uh, a high esteemed coal. 
and uh, Merrick had Steve Cohen too. Yes. But uh, Blakeburn Cole was uh, one of the, the best Coles for the railroad. Oh. And then see the railroad went out and they got uh, one other and they went into diesels so that they didn't need so the coal. So that they didn't need the coal. But uh, the whole trouble is they couldn't get the price for the coal of what it cost them so that's why they had to shut down. Yes. They, they use coal to make gas, don't they? They, they do they, now, yeah. And the coal, they never did we that. Had did the, we didn't have any coking plants. But see, pretty much all our coal was underground coal, except uh, the Blakeford mine is the only one that, uh, that was can surface. be uh, yeah, surface. And then, see, when the power plant was running, well, then at first they got coal from the Perrys, uh, very cheap, because it was waste coal off the waste dumps. And uh, then they got the waste dump at Colmont, coal that wasn't good enough to sell. Yes. And they burned that at the power plant. And then they uh, started the problem, they bailed coal mine. And uh, they took uh, a lot of surface coal from uh, the problem, they bailed. Yes. That's where Del Rey is. And uh, then uh, Ed Mullen and his father were interested in coal because uh, his father was uh, a foreman in the mine what they call the fire boss. Yes. And so they developed uh, the Blakeburn coal mine. And uh, they sold a lot of coal from there to the Granby uh, power plant yes. here. Yes. And uh, of course with the Granby working, when they started up in 1937, it was Japanese capital that uh, started them up. Uh, Mr. Bailey went over uh, Caesar got a bunch of Japanese businessmen that came over and put up the money to uh, start the power plant and then they bought the copper uh, produce until of course when the, the war started sold and the war started and they started throwing back at us. Yes, <laughs> yes that's right, they did. So that was the whole thing with that. Was, uh, so that five and prints up, and that was just about the time that the coal mines were all going under. Yes. So it uh, kind of helped the coal miners all to work to work at Copper They worked at Copper Mines. Uh, uh, well, Granby supplied some power to Princeton, didn't they? Uh, they did only when the West Kootenai couldn't. But uh, the Granby power plant was so big that when they turned on everything from here to uh, Nelson, they couldn't even see the flicker on the needle. Uh, the Granby power plant could have supplied the whole uh, southern uh, uh, British Columbia with power to spare. But see, the West Kootenai had the franchise, yes. and uh, they only wanted it when they wanted it. They, uh, uh, there was no way Granby could sell power. No, here. they had the franchise. Yes, Still uh, have it. Yeah. But it uh, does seem a pity that with power becoming so short that, that we couldn't do something. Well, in some British Columbia, I don't think we are short here yet. No, but other people yes. are. And it but seems as though if each area like ours could take care of themselves, it would lighten the load, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, it would, but uh, the cost of a uh, coal-fired uh, Mine coal put into the power plant uh, was uh, too great. It's too uh, great. Because well, wages are too high. Wages are too high. Uh, that's yes. uh, the main thing. Because water power, you don't need very many men. No. And uh, that's where the great help is. So well, you, you never did work for the mine yourself, did you? Did you ever work for Grandy? Oh, yes, yes. I worked up the Coffee Mountain. I was a contractor up there. I had a turning dozer in the open pits. Oh, yes. Uh, you contracted yourself? Yes, yeah. I got so much an hour to look at it. Look at the pit scene. Uh, Jimmy Logan had his shovels up there, and Bert Lawrence had a shovel up there. Uh, yes. Jimmy Logan had two shovels up there. And a lot of the People put some, like Rolo had some uh, dump trucks up there yes. working, and uh, Ivan McKay and Alan Gill and uh, uh, George Manson had a truck, and uh, I can't think of all the 
surprised about the three of us that were working here. Yes, of course the equipment wasn't so expensive then, was it? No. No, in 56 and 57, the, the big trucks were coming out. But see, the Crop Mountain, when it's uh, opened, they bought all the equipment that was about 40, 50, 60 years old at that time. And uh, we've got uh, a lathe down at the mill, a big lathe, that was one of the pioneers that was brought in here at the time uh, Elm B. Crop Mountain started. And they don't know how old it was before. Before the See, Let's because be. Granby had Anyox Phoenix that they operated, and they bought some of their old equipment from uh, Anyox and from Phoenix over to Cotton Mountain. Yes. Right there. Yes. So, yeah. Must have been a lot of different mining then. Oh, yes, it was. Well, underground mining uh, was totally different. You take uh, a lot of men, see, before they put the water on the, on the machines. Uh, the men would be working in dust so that they would have to reach out and touch the fellow who was working with them and make signs of what they wanted to do because they couldn't see him for the dust. For the dust. No, that wasn't good for their lungs, was it? No, there was a lot of them that uh, had silicosis, like my father had silicosis. Yes, yeah. And, you know, so that, uh, uh, and we had uh, a few of them that uh, finally died of silicosis. Yes. When, when did your father die? Uh, but uh, it's, it's not too long ago. No. It's been nine years ago. Oh, so. yes. Yes. But uh, he... Uh, a, lot, a lot of the men suffered from dust, from yes. emphysema and that things right. like that. Yeah. Maybe well, that's what they call it now, is it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, most of those that worked in the mines in those conditions aren't here now. Yes. Yes. We but, we uh, were able to get the we were able to get the mine rescue uh, the the safety cups. Yes. They all came in. Well, you must have were you involved with that? Did well, you no, compete? Well, I was involved with the uh, St. John's Angles that when we uh, let them take them over two cameras for storage, oh, yes. that we would uh, bring them back sometime when uh, we had a place to put them. Yes. But when I when we built the new village uh, uh, office, uh, I wanted them to have room in there, but they didn't have room for no. all the cups, uh, so no. that uh, I wasn't able to get them back from no. the cameras. But, but you did take part in the contests no, and things. No, in the competitions I the didn't, competition. then it was after, after we... Uh, those cups all went over, and I, I think I uh, uh, I didn't compete first aid until after all those uh, things were over, because at that time I was on the dairy ranch, and oh, I didn't yes. take part in first you aid. Didn't take part but either. after the mines all closed down, then I started to uh, uh, get interested in first aid and compete. Yes. And, uh, so then you would be getting into... Uh, into uh, civil defense. Yes, yes, okay. yes, we were. Well, civil defense came in before we were at the ranch. Yes. Oh, yes. But uh, during the last war, uh, we had uh, what we called the uh, Rocky Mountain Rangers. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's what, Harry, that's what Harry Avery said he belonged to. Yes, yes, there was a whole bunch of us belonged to the Rocky Mountain Rangers. And we was there good. a troop here? Uh, I mean, yes. And did you and have parade nights yes, and things? Yes. Yes, we met once a week, and we were out on maneuvers, and Mr. Gregory was uh, the head of it. And uh, you take, there was uh, another unit up at Copper Mountain, and we sometimes used to go to Copper Mountain to compete with them in, uh, in rifle shooting. Yes. And, uh, there aren't any uniforms around, are there? No, there isn't. We had, uh, we had old uniforms from the First World War. Oh, yes. Uh, the baggy casual dress, but we had the uh, jackets and pants and everything to rub around in the, in the bush. Oh. And uh, we did with rifles, and we had Sten gun practice and, uh, and the Bren gun, you know. And uh, then we had uh, unarmed uh, 
instructors that came in to teach us in the unwind combat. Yes. And see, at that time, they were afraid of the Japanese uh, uh, the invasion. The aliens, yeah. And then, and it was at the time of uh, those uh, fire balloons that the Japanese sent over. Yes. There weren't very many that uh, landed here in British Columbia. No. But uh, we were all briefed We were lucky. And, we uh, were yes, lucky. we were. Yeah. And uh, well, we had the, we had the, must have been about 35 members of Princeton here. So yeah, some of the men would join the army, didn't they? Yes, well, uh, these were the ones that uh, that uh, didn't uh, were too old or too crippled or with flat feet that couldn't. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, they they uh, weren't uh, army. they weren't army material. No, that's it. No. Oh, See, at the time uh, I was uh, exempted from uh, because uh, I was uh, running the dairy ranch. It was essential. And, yeah, and they couldn't. Uh, and they said that that was one of the most important because they couldn't get uh, ones that could uh, look after very yeah. birds and that. that no. was, and, uh, during the war, most of the young people all took off to the army and yes. left, uh, left the farms. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, we had uh, we had good, uh, very good fights uh, for about three years there. Oh, yes, I didn't know that. I'd, I'd never heard that.